Hello everyone. In the previous video, we solved for optimum portfolio weights that would maximize the Sharpe ratio and we used the solver add-in for this purpose. In this video, we are using the same data here to carry out Dr. Harry Markowitz's analysis for minimizing the risk subject to a given desired return. Let us start by looking at our results for the Sharpe ratio maximization. When short sales were allowed, the mean return of the optimum portfolio was 0.1812 here. The variance was 0.2131, the standard deviation 0.4617 and 0.3924 was the Sharpe ratio. These were the optimum weights assuming short sales were allowed and when no short sales were allowed these were our weights and our results for mean variance standard deviation and the sharp ratio changed as well now if we want to arrive at minimum risk for the same desired return as here let us take up this case first where short sales are allowed and let us say 0.8112 is our desired return. We can use the Markowitz's algorithm to solve for optimum portfolio weights and we hope that we are going to get the same weights as we got before. So we have the results from our sharp ratio maximization here which we can use for comparison purposes. Now let's get on with our business. So this is our data. This is asset 1, asset 2, asset 3, excess return vector, variance of assets returns and covariances of assets returns. We have the weight vector pre-filled with some random values as we started in the previous video as well. And the sum of weights is 1 which we have found by using the sum function and we have added up these three values. This is our bordered variance covariance matrix. So this is the top border. This is the left border and inside we have the variance covariance matrix. We also want that our desired return should be 0.1812. So let us write that in this cell here 0.1812 and let us find out the other parameters that we need to supply the solver with. Let us find out the mean variance and the Sharpe ratio. So in this cell we are going to do B9 times sum product. This is what we did in the last video as well. So we are taking the sum product of this array and this array enter we want to do the same thing with these two columns as well but we want to keep this reference unchanged so we can do that by writing a dollar sign with the letter A on either side of it so let us do that quickly and then we can drag the formula to the right for the next two cells once we do this let us find out the variance first since we are at it. We can just sum these three values to get the variance just like we did before. And we can find the mean return of the portfolio or the expected return of the portfolio by using the sum product function again and providing the weight vector and the excess return vector. We can also very easily find the Sharpe ratio here by dividing the mean return with the standard deviation. We didn't make any cell for standard deviation but we can simply write in the denominator here square root of variance. So this is the Sharpe ratio then. So nothing is optimized as yet. We are going to begin with a scenario where short sales are allowed first. 
So let us go to the data tab and invoke the solver. What we want to do, what is our target cell going to be? We want to minimize the variance this time. So our target cell will have to be B16. What do we want to do to the variance? We want to minimize it. So we select this option, minimize. By changing what cells? We want to change the weights. So here are our weights. We give this input. We also want to tell the solver that the sum of weights should be equal to 1. So we add that as a constraint here. This is the sum of weights here. And this has to be equal to 1. We also want to tell the solver that the expected return of the portfolio here should be equal to our desired return, this value here in this cell. So we can do that by adding another constraint. We can tell Excel that the value of this cell, which is B15 or expected portfolio return, should be equal to our desired return, which is in cell B18. Click OK. And now let's click the Solve button to see. We are hoping that we should get the same weights like here in sharp ratio maximization case. What do we see? We see that we have the same weights returned to us. 52.9% in the first asset. Short sell, the second asset. And another 52.9% in the third asset should be invested. So we get similar results. Now let us change the scenario to where no short sales are allowed. If no short sales were allowed with the sharp, sharp ratio maximization, these were our weights here. And the mean return or the expected return of the portfolio was 0.1614. Let us say now that we want to arrive at the same return, 0.1654 actually, I said 0.1614, pardon me for that. So we want the same desired return as we got here, 0.1654 or 16.54%. So we invoke the solver again. The data from our, the information from our previous calculation is still there, but this time around we are going to have to add additional constraints because we don't want the weights to fall below zero. Short selling is not allowed. So we add the first additional constraint that this weight here, the weight on the first asset, should be greater than or equal to zero. We also want to say that the weight of the second asset should also be greater than or equal to zero. And we want to do the same thing with the third asset's weight as well. Oh, it looks like I changed the target cell which is not correct. So let's come back here, add the additional constraint. This is the third asset's weight. And it showed it should be equal to or greater than zero. So we have provided all the information that is needed to the, to the solver. And let's click Solve. It says that it has found a solution. Let us see if we have the desired result. These were the results which we got with sharp ratio maximization. And here we see identical results. 53.84% in the first asset. Nothing in the second asset and 46.16% in the third asset. So these are almost the same results as we got with sharp ratio maximization. So we can use either technique. We can try to minimize the risk subject to a given level of return or we could simply look at overall portfolio performance by trying to maximize the sharp ratio and finding the optimum weights which will allow us to do that. 
This is all I wanted to tell you in this video. See you later.